Today I am going to show you what you will need if you want to repaint a Corinthian figure. Let's crack on. My mum always said repainting figures is like a box of chocolates. At least she might have done if I showed any interest in repainting figures in my youth or if that metaphor made any sense whatsoever. Maybe I should just get on with today's video. Um, today I'm not going to be actually doing any painting on the video. I'm just going to show you what you will need if you want to paint yourself. Not paint yourself, paint a figure. Um, because I think how can you actually crack on with some painting if you don't have all of the things you need. So first off, let's have a look at my painting area in my living room. There we go. You'll see a few different things on there. Um, I will talk you through the things that I have around, the things that I think are important for repainting and give you a bit more detail about them. And that will be today's video. First thing you might have noticed is I've put some paper down. Accidents happen sometimes when you're painting. You might spill the odd drop of paint. It's quite difficult to clean off. You don't want to be upset in mums, wives or girlfriends by getting paint all over the table. Um, not a problem for me because I live alone. So um, ladies, if you do have any interest in someone who's pretty good at painting plastic figures and owns his own table, form a queue, <laughs> comments below. Um, yeah, so put some paper down, don't make a mess on your table. Um, brushes, obviously pretty important for painting a figure. I have several brushes on my table. Uh, magic of editing, I'm going to zoom in on them now. Um, the first set of brushes I ever bought were a Humbrol set. There were four in the set. To be honest, I just bought them because they were next to the paints in the shop. But they're a decent all-round set, four of different sizes. Uh, the sizing system works on a system of basically the bigger the number, the thicker the brush. Obviously, you're going to need some small brushes for your detailed stuff. Um, to be honest, at the moment, I'm only really using two, well, three brushes. I've got a four, a size four brush, and I've got two brushes that are zero, 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 zero. I think maybe just as I've got more practice, I'm better at keeping it neat with the four brush than, so I don't need to use the sort of in-between sizes as much as I used to. Um, there you'll see the zero, 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 zero ones are really thin um, and they are useful for all the detailed stuff. Uh, the brushes that I have, like I said, the orange ones are Humbrol, the blue ones say on them Windsor and Newton Cotman. I just got them from an art shop. I think I might have got one of them off eBay. Um, I'm sure other brands are there as well. I suppose it's just a case of trying out and finding ones that you like, but I like these ones. Uh, when it comes to paint, there are a couple of options. I know some people talk about using uh, acrylic paints. I have always just used enamel. You come in, they come in little tins this size. They are 14 mil tins. Uh, I get mine from Hobbycraft generally, sometimes I get them online. They're going to cost you around about £1.75 a tin. Um, they last for quite a long time if you make sure that the lid is on them properly. I think when I first started, to be honest, I just bought black and white, yellow, blue, red and green. Um, obviously, the more different kits you want to do and which, whichever kits you are going to do depends on what, uh, what colours you're going to need. Speaking of colours that you might need, just a little tip that I've had. When I had to start mixing colours for the first time, I didn't know what to do it in. And then I had the brilliant idea of using old milk bottle lids because they're just a decent size to tip a little bit of uh, paint in. Obviously, they're not going to leak their watertight, paint tight, whatever the correct phrase will be. So, yeah, milk bottle lids are a good little size for mixing paints in if you're going to try mixing. Um, while I'm on the subject of lids, <laughs> I am... Um, I also uh, have a white spirit lid, which I keep on my table, and I put in my white spirit lid, white spirits, for cleaning the brushes. Having a little container like that, again, it's not too big, you can just put a little bit in there. That is plenty big enough to swirl your brushes in to clean them, which means you don't have to go to the sink every time you want to clean your brush, which is quite a useful little tip. It took me a little while to work out, actually. I was back and forth to sinks every time I wanted to clean my brush. but um. Yeah, you can just swirl your brush in there, press it against the side and squeeze it to get the excess off. Have that on there, it'll save you a bit of time. Um, sort of linked to that, 
I always keep a towel here. You can see it's an old towel. It's got lots of stains on it now. Um, that's good for either, if you get paint on your hands, you can just rub it off straight away. If your brushes, you think they've still got a bit of the color on that you've just tried to clean off, or you think they've got a bit of white spirit on that might affect the next color, you can dry them on your towel and then you can test them on your hand. I was just test to see if there's still any paint on there. If it comes clear, then great. If not, you've got your towel ready to wipe your hands with. Um, another one of my weapons of choice are little um, cotton buds. Really, really useful. One thing they're useful for is if you make a mistake and you think, oh, I want to clean that off straight away, you can just clean it off. You can leave it to dry and just paint over it afterwards. But if it's something that that is just a quick job, you can just quickly wipe it off. Um, you can use it to wipe paint off your hands if you just dip it in your white spirit and do that. And also, when they have got dirty and full, you know, the, the ends are all mucky like this one, you can cut the end off and they make really useful little tools for stirring your paint with because you always need to stir your paint before you start. One more thing, decals. Uh, I use them to put names and numbers on the back of my shirts and badges. Some people hand paint them. I think you're never gonna get as neat as you do with something you print off your computer. I know people want me to do a decals video. I will do one in the future, now's not the time. Just I'll, uh, let, I will let you know that decals are something that I think you need to do a good repaint. Um, I will put a link to where I get mine from in the description or get the paper, you have to make them yourself, but where I get the decal paper from, link in the description. Um, and yeah, I'll do a video in the future on how to make them, how to use them. I think that's everything. Paints, brushes, paper down, towel, uh, white spirit, mix in lids if you need them. Um, oh, one last thing, really useful if your lighting is not so good way of painting, angle poise lamp. Obviously you can have that pointing to exactly where you need to get good light on your figures. It's difficult to paint if you can't see them properly. So yeah, angle poise lamp, really useful for when you are painting. And now I'm pretty sure that is it. Um, if you enjoyed the video, if you found it informative, useful, dare I say amusing, I would appreciate it if you would drop a like, uh, subscribe if you want to see more, look on my social media pages, links all in the description. And um, yeah, until next time.